Fires and explosions have continued for the sixth day after the Ukrainian army's kamikaze drones attacked an oil base in the Rostov region of Russia on August 18. It is said that explosions in oil reservoirs continue. It is said that there was another drone attack on the area on August 23. According to Russian telegram channels, a kamikaze drone belonging to Ukraine fell into the factory area, and there were no casualties. It should be noted that the fire, which has been going on for six days, covers an area of more than 10,000 square meters, and a large number of fuel tanks have burned. A firefighting train and aviation were involved in extinguishing the fire. There are many injured among the firefighters. A Russian soldier threw a grenade into the headquarters where Russian invaders from the Storm Z unit were sleeping in order to cross over to the Ukrainian side. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense reported this on social media as a result of the successful operation of the I Want to Live project and the Freedom of Russia Legion called Kamish, a serviceman of the Russian army blew up the headquarters of the officers of the Storm Z battalion and went over to the Ukrainian side the statement said. In particular, according to intelligence, in the winter, a Russian FPV pilot with the call sign Silver contacted the Freedom of Russia Legion and expressed a desire to cooperate with Ukraine. He explained that he was prompted to do so by the systematic military and other crimes of his command, including extrajudicial executions, beatings and extortion. At the same time, as part of interaction with Russian servicemen, Ukraine was able to obtain valuable intelligence data on the location, numbers and intentions of the enemy in a specific direction of the front, as the main intelligence directorate notes. Further, at a convenient moment, Silver threw a grenade into the ventilation hole of the basement of the headquarters of the occupation unit Storm Z, where his battalion commander and other Russian officers were sleeping. There were about 15 people in the basement. In this room, there was a pipe right above the bed where the battalion commander slept. It went out onto the street next to the entrance and we decided to throw a grenade or two into this pipe so that they would explode next to them, Silver said. However, when the deed was done, the Russian escaped along a pre-arranged route and crossed into territory controlled by Ukraine. The main intelligence directorate emphasizes that now the Russian volunteer has become a recruit of the Freedom of Russia Legion in order to fight the criminal Putin regime. Earlier in April 2024, a Russian with the call sign Goga set fire to the premises of the small missile ship Serpukov in the city of Baltisk, Kaliningrad region. He was a serviceman of the Baltic fleet with access to state secrets. In December 2023, he contacted the Freedom of Russia Legion. The Ukrainian offensive in Kursk region succeeded thanks to electronic warfare blitz that blinded Russian reconnaissance drones. Russia responds with drones immune to jamming. As Forbes writes, this is the first time such a weapon has been used on the battlefield and also a kind of warning for most countries that rely heavily on jamming to protect themselves from terrorist drone attacks. FPV drones need radio communication with the operator. So on the front line, you can see many jammers that knock out radio noise on selected frequencies. Effective electronic warfare means create a safe bubble in the region of 50 to 100 meters. So UAVs constantly change operating frequencies and the jammers themselves are updated. 
That's why a blitz attack like Kursk is needed with a long lead time to detect all frequencies and enough jamming to block everything in the area and stop all drones for a while, the journalists explain. Radio communication requires line of sight and during the attack itself, the drones dive quite low so at the last second, interference appears in the video signal which impairs visibility. One solution to the jamming problem is terminal guidance using artificial intelligence. The operator locks on a target at a certain distance and the drone pursues it even if communication is lost. These systems are already being deployed in small numbers by both sides. Another approach is wire guidance. The drone reels in a fiber optic cable as it moves, similar to wire guided missiles like the TOW, the article says. Ukraine recorded a Russian prototype of a fiber optic drone back in March, and recently Russian telegram channels showed footage of the use of Prince Vandal Novgorodsky drones in the Kursk region. They are said to be immune to electronic warfare. Forbes previously reported that the German company HiCat is testing the HCX drone in Ukraine, which is resistant to radio frequency jamming and detection because it communicates with the operator via fiber optic cable. Back in March, Ukrainian developers announced the appearance of a fiber optic FPV drone called Banderik Strichka, 